Thanks for stopping by. I'd like to preface this video by saying it is not a knitting tutorial, but a means to have something playing in the background while you work on your own knitting project. If you're like me and really enjoy YouTube, you find that a lot of the content you like to watch is very visually engaging, so you're several hours in and you've only watched videos and haven't gotten nearly as far along in your knitting as you would have liked to. So that's where I come in. And if you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. Happy New Year. Um, it is... I was going to say it's Saturday. It's not Saturday. <sighs> it's not Saturday. It is Tuesday. Yes, so Tuesday. It's New Year's Eve here. And I just got back from doing some tooling around town with my partner. We had lunch buffet at this Indian restaurant that we really like. And then we went to the mall because... Um, they are in the process of buying a ring based off of a video game they really like and so they just need to go to a jeweler to get their finger sized and then we just told around the mall a little bit and I got some goodies that I'll show you in a minute um, but yeah we're back to our normal sort of programming nothing flashy nothing crazy um, did all the organizing well some of it <laughs> and just getting back into some projects that I had um, to work on. So uh, to go beginning, um, well as at the mall, I, as I, you know, I am a cat person. Um, judging by my name, you may know that. And I, there was this like game, like tabletop game, board game, knickknack store that's having a 50% off sale and they had a lot of calendars and stuff, and so even though I already have more calendars than any human would need, I picked up one. This is the, uh, it's probably, <clears throat> excuse me, it's probably a little bit blurry, but um, the 365 Days of Cats. It says the world's favorite cat calendar. Didn't know that, um, but here's what some of the pictures on the back look like just to kind of give you an idea of what is going on in here and I was deciding on whether or not to keep this at work because I have one calendar I have a little bub calendar on my wall at work I have a large desk calendar for like planning bigger events and things and then I have the new um, desk calendar that my aunt got me for Christmas um, yeah I don't know I don't know if I want to bring this to, let me see, let me open it up right now while you guys are here so I can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Uh, or not, maybe, oh there we go. And if you hear any crazy hooting and hollering, um, my partner is playing some games downstairs with some friends online and then my neighbors are back home so they might be doing some New Year's Eve stuff as well. Oh, you know what? I might have this at my office. Yeah, I like that. That's cute. Um, yes, there were lots of different cat calendars there so I think next year um, I'll try that store again and you know wait wait till New Year's Eve to take part in the sale so I can um, utilize a discount for something that I already want. I'm trying to see there's like this flap thingy back here that I'm trying to lift out because I think it locks into place so then it stays kind of propped up on an angle. But that's fun. I also got some um, lucky cat playing cards, so the little uh, good luck cat or good fortune cat, and there's some images of what it looks like in the back there, um, and everything was 50% off, so I only spent like 20 bucks for everything, and this bad boy, isn't this, isn't this perfect for this channel, a cat? Surrounded by yarn. I saw it and my partner was looking at me looking at it and he's like, are you gonna get it? I'm like, yep, and I just like <laughs> Swiped it off the shelf. So yes, this is Cabo Hill 1000 puzzle 1000 piece puzzle um, Poster included Ooh. Um, 
they actually, my partner suggested that I do a live with you guys and work on this. Um, I'm not sure if my camera can, but I'll look into it. When I'm editing this video, I'll look into seeing if I can do a live with this camera, and then you might, you might see that sometime, um, me working on a puzzle. Um, I definitely love puzzles. I don't have, like, any here, but growing up I worked on them, and, um, you know, they have them at work sometimes for people to do while they're waiting around, and it's just fun. Knitting is fun, puzzles are fun, little hobbies are fun. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get into some knitting today. Uh, we have the, what is this? Big Chunky Comfy Hat by Erica Kempf. Uh, Broughton. Um, this was a free pattern online at Ravelry, so I was particularly looking for something to do with this yarn. So if you're not familiar with what this is, um, this is the yarn that I used for the, the cozy blanket that I had been working on, the metal lane blanket that I made as a Christmas gift. And I had two balls left of yarn because after Oh, what was the story behind that? So, I bought a lot of yarn. Um, this is all closed out yarn, so the um, discontinued yarn webs or yarn.com is not carrying it anymore. I bought a lot in the beginning of the different colors I was using, started knitting in the purple, realized that I needed way more uh, balls of purple yarn to make the blanket the length that I wanted. Um, so I bought more yarn of purple, and then I knit all of the dark gray, and then I noticed that because I knit so much of the purple and not so much of the dark gray, that it kind of made this nice um, incremental gradation where there's a lot of purple, a little bit less of the gray than the purple, and then even a little bit less of the light gray than the darker gray than the purple. Um, so I ended up not needing the last two balls of yarn that I had, um, particularly for this project. And my friend, who I knit for last year, uh, I'm working on the swoop hat for her with the crazy yarn, as well as that scarf that I made with the crazy yarn. And her partner, um, I knit him a scarf last year with the loppy yarn that you guys saw in my um, organization video that I just did. But uh, thinking to not use that yarn for a hat, um, since it'll be like directly on him, I thought about taking an opportunity to use some of this discounted yarn because, or discontinued yarn, because I don't have anything else in mind to knit with it because I bought it specifically for the blanket. So long story short, I went, well, very long story, a little bit shorter than, <laughs> than going through or even more of an explanation, but I went to Ravelry and I did my filter search so that I could find a project that utilized this yarn, was hat, was either unisex or for men, and um, was knit in the round because I did not want to do any seaming. And I found this. So you probably won't be able to get a good picture of it. But, um, because my camera does not autofocus, but it's just a simple hat. Um, it looks like it's mostly a, um, pearl two knit one rib style, um, some variation of that to get, like, a little bit more of a columned effect, but it's very, very simple. And I've already knit... I left my stitch counter downstairs, but I'm one, two, three, I'm on my, I'm going to be knitting my fifth round here, and I need to do eight of this before I can get out of the rib pattern for the, the cuff brim, or however you call it. Um, so this is a pearl to knit one. And of course, below you'll see that I have this pattern available. So if you would like to try it yourself, you have some super bulky yarn that you're looking to use up. This is probably going to be a good idea to do. Besides, you know, pot holders, coasters, and all that that good stuff. Oops. Wait. Nope. Yep. I'm, I'm on. I'm doing the right thing. <laughs> I'm like. 
thinking of what's a good pattern because I'm working on two other things. I'm working on the swoop beanie. I am working on another baby blanket for one of my partner's friends that's expecting in February. And both of those patterns require quite a bit of attention, or at least like I can, you know, listen to YouTube while I knit, um, but I do have to keep in my head where I am so I'm not constantly looking at the pattern. And I don't know if I can do that yet. I, well, especially not with the swoop, but with the blanket, if I am at the point where I can try to talk and knit with it at the same time without messing up the pattern. Um, it's, it's getting to the point where I can start to see what it looks like. So if I'm doing my thing, um, I know in some patterns I get to a point where I can kind of just look at it and know what to do next. Um, and then so if I'm talking and I lose my place, I can just kind of eyeball what's happening. But I don't know if I'm there yet with the blanket. But hopefully soon because it's going to take a lot of work. It's bigger than the one I was working on before. Um, that cream and bluish greenish um, color scheme one that I was showing you guys. And that one, by the way, I did finish and blocked it. Took a, a little teeny photo of it on Instagram. So if you kind of want to look at what the, the finished product kind of looks like, I would say check out my Instagram. You'll see that there. And that was the magic number blanket. Which, you know, I like the pattern enough that I want to see if I can scale it to more like a throw size. Because you're just increasing on the bias, so it's not like you have to do too much math. And depending on how many increases you want to go before you start to color switch till you get to the widest point in your knitting, then you just start decreasing. Um, and to decrease, I think it was, um, was it a slip slip knit? I think it was a slip slip knit when you got to the border, so... I'll look at the pattern again to figure that part out, but simple and cute. Um, but yeah, considering that it's the end of the year, and this is actually the 50th video I've uploaded to my channel, so it's kind of a landmark for me anyway, like a, a big whole number, end of the year, thinking about what to do for next year. Um, so I pose the question to you, what is your New Year's resolution? Do you believe in New Year's resolutions? Do you have any? I would love to know what they are. I personally, for myself, like, I used to have resolutions, but I am horrible at sticking to things, like, rules and routines and any kind of, like, regiment. So I would make New Year's resolutions all the time when I was younger, like in my 20s and stuff, and they would always fall through. And this year, I mean, I didn't have one last year at all. Like, I didn't even think about it. But this year, I kind of want to, at least for 2020, not even like a resolution, but just like have some new things to focus on. And I wrote some of them down because I have, <laughs> one of them on my list is the reason why I need to have uh, the thing on my list and do the things on my list. Um, but let me finish this round here and then I will share with you what I wrote down. I can hear him screaming downstairs. I don't think he's doing very well. It's a new game he's playing. And I left my, yeah, I left my sketch, I left my stitch counter downstairs, but I, I just did one, two, three, four, wait, wait. One, four, five. I'm either on my fifth or fourth row, but I mean, one row difference isn't going to kill anything because it's just the border. Um, border, brim, edge, cuff, however you like to call it. Um, but yes, so I have my list thing. I just have this to-do ink pad or notepad that I write all kinds of things like um, what I spent during my yarn crawl and uh, keep count of my stitches. Uh, but here we have 2020 tasks. So I call these tasks. 
Um, I don't know if changing the name is really going to affect how much I commit to this or not, but I think writing it down at least, like, makes it, like, I've thought about it, I've sort of committed to it, um, I've acknowledged that it's something that I want to do, so we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, but, um, 2020 tasks. Uh, use my planner, and then I did a dash for real. Planners, um, for instance, this one. I bought this planner. So this is just the cover. Um, it's a Hobonichi planner. I got it off of Jet Pens. It's a thick, very fun pa uh, planner. Like, it's a little, uh, I think this is A6 um, paper. Um, soup, I call them, I call them like Bible pages because they're really wispy thin pages. Um, very transparent, but um, I keep or at least I try to keep a lot of my um, personal stuff in here, like when I was off of work, when I was going to my book club, what we were reading in my book club, um, when I had any time to meet with friends, um, I'd have notes for like what to read for my next book club, like on the actual day, and this was a lot. I love the design of this. Um, you just buy each pattern or each planner, take it out and keep it in this little case um, or cover, and, you know, I, I was trying, this is my second year having this particular style planner in here, um, and this case actually was designed just for this Hobonichi planner, um, and of course it's kitties, so, um, I have a, like a plastic, um, protector around it, but it is a fabric planner. I got it on Etsy, it was really cute, and I think that encouraged me to use it, and I would use it here and there, and then I wouldn't, and then I'd stop, and then I'd here and there, mainly my book club stuff I'd keep in here because um, it was just fun to have it with me at my club, write down what I was reading next, so when I got home, hop on line and see if my library had it, but um, as far as like being consistent, not at all, so um, I'm thinking for 2020, I did buy a new one, and it's a lot more easy to manage. It's a, a tinier planner, so I'm going to pop that in this and hopefully actually combine my work planner with my personal planner so everything will be in one spot. Um, I'm hoping that will encourage me to use it more because it is useful. I always love making lists, but I have, I have the hoarder side of me has a bunch of little notebooks with lists in them, and I just cross things out as I complete them, but I have a ton of things with lists on them, notepads, journals, little memo pads, and things like that, and I just keep making lists of stuff. But if I had a planner, I feel like that'd add a little bit more structure to my list making, as I love making lists, um, which is, is that a weird? To just make lists about things like I make lists when I'm planning my knitting I made lists of the ideas that I want to shoot with you guys for videos um, I made lists of different things I'd buy for people for Christmas well I guess that's a normal list shopping list that's a normal list um, but things like I want to buy for myself later like big ticket items smaller items like I made a list of what I what my goals were for Black Friday shopping like I make lists a lot. It's crazy. I, I volunteer for um, at my job and I make lists of what I'm doing for that and it's like hmm, I don't know why why do I like making lists so much? Now I'm I'm trying to figure out my life. <laughs> but moving on to the rest of the list. So planner is the first thing because I need to have a little more structure and stay on top of the things that I want to do. And I think a planner, using it, it's cute, but actually using it and not just looking at it when it's in my bag is important. Um, what, how are we doing on time? Oof, okay. Um, eat more veggies with a smiley face after that. I, I like food. I love food. I, we went out to dinner. Well, it was like a late lunch, like liner supper type thing just uh, before I started filming, and then after that we went to the mall, and then I bought a Cinnabon. I'm going to eat that after because I'm stuffed from dinner, but then we stopped at this little kiosk, and 
I got a bubble tea, and if you don't know, well, bubble tea is different depending on where you go, but the kind I like is the kind that's more like a creamy milkshake, but it's like the powder and the blended ice and the tapioca pearls versus like the actual tea tea, um, but it's more um, viscous. <sighs> but yeah, I, I like food, but I don't always like to eat healthfully. Um, I don't, I'm not mindful at all about my eating, and I want to have more structure in what I eat. And when I eat it, I love to snack, and I try to go in these waves of buying more healthy options, but then I'm, I'm like at job, and I go to the Quickie Mart or something, I'm like, you know, that, um, Reese's Cup Bar looks ten times better than the bowl of blueberries I have in my fridge, you know what I mean? And I try to buy things that taste just as tasty to me as the non-healthy items, but it's it's not the same. I'll be honest, it's not the same. And I'll eat it and then I'm like, mm, yeah, I still want something else. I want that edge, like that edge. So I'll try to incorporate more veggies because they're good for you. And, you know, they tell you all the time to eat them when you're a kid. And then I think after I went to college and could eat whatever I wanted to, I was just like, forget about the corn, forget about the green beans, forget about having a side salad with my meal. Like, I just want bread and sweets and meat <laughs> and everything that's going to send me to an early grave. And I lived that life way, way, way too long. And it's not so much about, like being in shape or being healthy because I'm like, eh, that's not me. That's, that's not realistic for me, but to work on my diet is important and just to make an effort to have better things to eat um, in my life I think is important and not so much. And I think health will come with that. Um, like, thankfully I don't have any major health issues thank goodness, um, but considering that I am becoming an older lady, um, and I do want to live <laughs> without struggles, um, I should make efforts to at least moderate what I take in as, like, delicious junk food and then what I eat as, like, a better option that is important to sustain my body. So, there. Veggies. Um, eat more veggies. Um, keep craft corner tidy. Now that I've made an effort to make this space, like, livable and, you know, a little more, a lot more organized, I can actually see, I'm looking at it right now, I can see all my yarn and my clear totes, my tools and my project bugs and my notions and stuff. So that is, that has been so much better. And since filming that video, I've had to pull stuff out of these totes at least three times now, um, just either finishing projects, putting things away, or grabbing more things for these other projects I'm working on, so it's been so helpful. And so I want to like take that energy and move it to other areas. I'm thinking now of like that table that I showed you guys when I was filming that corner, it still has some clutter on it. and. Yes, it's all useful things, but I could probably do a little bit more with like how I'm organizing it on that table so it doesn't look as much as like a bomb went off. Um, so things like that. So keeping that corner tidy, kind of taking that energy and moving it to other areas of my home. Um, shop my pattern books. That's actually going to be a video that we'll work on together. Um, I have a lot of stuff that was donated to me. Um, and there are a couple things I've picked up too since I started knitting, and I still keep referring to Ravelry. I love Ravelry, I can find a lot of stuff there, but I still have things at home. And so instead of like downloading all of these patterns, I should look more at what I already have and see if I can find something cool and interesting to work on before I pick up another pattern. So, shopping the the pattern stash is going to be something to work on in 2020. Um, knit small, and I spelled that S-M-O-L, like the little baby, small kitty, little stuff. Um, I took on some really big projects this year as far as time commitment, as far as yarn usage, and it was overwhelming. And I'm so happy that I got all my knitting done, 
but this year I have some stuff I want to do for me. Some things are bigger, some things are smaller, but just to focus on like my gift projects, to think about smaller things that are more easy for me to take with me different places as well as finish in a timely manner without stressing so much. Um, learn to crochet! So I know that I don't need to, I honestly don't have any crochet patterns. I have knitting. Um, there might, no, 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 I'm thinking, I'm like, nope, I don't have any crochet patterns. And with that, I'm going to take a moment to stop the recording so that my um, time doesn't cut out. <laughs> I know, this is so, so organized, so organized. Learning to crochet. I have seen so many really, really cute projects that are just teeny tiny things. Very simple, um, um, amiguri, I think is the term, where it's like Japanese-based, um, small little toys and stuff, and there, I, I am not one to jump on the Baby Yoda bandwagon, but I saw this, it was on Ravelry, I saw this crochet pattern for Baby Yoda, and it had like a removable robe and everything, and it was super cute. I don't even like Yoda like that, but I really wanted to knit that. And I just watched this video on YouTube of this woman who was showing um, us how to do like the amiguri um, animals, and it was a little whale, and they looked like she had one that was like hot pink um, on the tummy, and the the top part of the whale was like a confetti color yarn, and it looked like a cupcake, and I'm like, I would love to do that. I would love to learn to crochet so I could just make cute little animals and toys and things like that. So maybe it's on my list, so it's a maybe, but I'm thinking, you know, focus on the stuff I wanted in it first and then maybe take up crocheting later on in the year. Um, finish dusty crafts. So they're not dusty as in like they have you know, accumulated dust, but in the sense that they've sat off on a shelf for years and years and have like essentially collected dust because I just haven't used them and worked on them. And I have like, let's see, I'm looking at my top of my, I have a, a closet right behind you. And I have Hello Kitty. I have a dragon. And I have a a Pikachu. It, it doesn't look like Pikachu, but it is supposed to be Pikachu. Um, that my aunt earlier on had made for my partner and I. And she even said it on the phone. She called a while ago. Like, this was back when she had first sent them off for me for Christmas. And she's like, I should have just stuffed them when I sent them to you because I have not finished stuffing them. And it's, it's so easy to stuff these toys, but I cannot, I just cannot sit down and say, okay, today I am just going to stuff these toys. <laughs> and I don't know what it is about it, but I have not, and it has been like four years now, four or five years since I received those tough stuffies, and they're just like the skins, and I haven't stuffed them yet. So I have some stuffing already for the Hello Kitty um, and I used, like, one, I bought one bag of stuffing, like, polyfill, and I stuffed it, and it wasn't enough, so I was like, okay, I'll buy some more, so I bought some more, and I just couldn't, I couldn't get back into it, and I haven't, and they've been moving from place to place with me, and they're still just stuffy skins, so I feel bad, but it's like, I don't know what's wrong, why I can't do it, <sighs> it's kind of like, washing a dish. You're like, it's just one dish. I don't really want to wash just one dish. I wait till I have a couple so it's worth my while. And then like you walk by and it's later in the day and you have like 10 dishes and you're like, oh, now I really don't want to wash any dishes. <laughs> so it's kind of like that with the stuffies. But I think now that I have you guys around, it might motivate me more to work on stuffing them because then it'll be something to do while I film with you guys. Um, so we'll see. 
but yes, it's on my list, though it's, um, mm, it is number seven out of ten things that I've written down, um, so we'll see. Uh, let's see, paint my nails with all colors, and that means all the colors in my collection. I, as you know, love to paint my nails, and I tend to use a few colors more than I use others, but I did a, like a haul, or not a haul, like a declutter when I s started going cruelty free, and I gave like all my OPI, all my Nicole, all my um, SC, like everything that was not a cruelty free brand to a friend of mine. Um, and I've collected more since than other brands of polishes. But, um, as far as use of those polishes, I'm not very good at rotating them out. Like, I love all the colors, but like, when I feel a mood, it's hard to think of like, the really bright colors that I like so much actually on my nails. So, my goal in 2020 is to make an effort to paint my nails with every single color once. And when I've done that, then when I've seen them all on my nails, I can say, yes, I love this formula, or no, I don't like how that looks with my skin tone, or no, that color is like so 20, 2005, and you know, my tastes have changed, blah, blah, blah. But I give them all at least one try through. And then the ones that I really don't want anymore, either uh, give them up at work or find another friend who wants some nail polishes. So that's something I need to do. Um, excuse me. <sighs> Man, I think <laughs> from eating all that food, I'm just like, I could go for a nap right now. But I... It's not time to go to bed yet. I still have to stay up so I can toast. I brought out my um, my fancy glasses because we have sparkling cider. So at midnight we'll be able to to cheers to the new year. Um, what else do I have on my list? Oh, I have question marked nine and ten. Cat DNA. Um, there is like a twenty three and me for cats, and I have a modern cat magazine subscription. I've been a Modern Cat subscriber for three, four years now. It's been a while. Um, pretty much since like they first came out I was like, cool, yes, I want to subscribe. So I've had that subscription and several issues ago they had an ad to, you know, do a swab of your kitty and send in their DNA and they could get evaluated so you know like what their lineage is and stuff and they're, what they're predisposed to health-wise and everything like that. And um, I really can't remember the issue now, but I think they had a free, or like get, pay only $99 for your um, cat DNA kit or something like that. And I thought that'd be a fun idea because one, I have not done 23andMe myself um, or Ancestry or whatever because I just haven't yet. and. I would really like to know, like, who my other, what my lineage is. Like, I've heard some things about what my um, ethnic, ethnic backgrounds are, but I've also heard a lot of things from these same people that are just completely lies, so I would rather just take a DNA test so I can stop, like, wondering. It's just getting around to it and, you know, deciding, you know, do I want my my information any more than I'm already oversharing right now as I am talking to you to just circulate out there. But at the same time, like, these things have helped find, you know, serial killers and things. And if I was related to one, I would certainly want to know so I could do anything I can to help, you know, stop them from being a horrible person. But, you know, beyond that, um, just to know where I came from and where my family's come from and you know, besides the obvious being an American-born black person, where I probably came from, but like actually where? Where did I come from? Where did my family come from? Um, 
So I want to find out for my kitties because I have speculation. I would love to think that Koji is like part Maine Coon because he's so fluffy and he's like this hardy cat. Like he's heavy, but he's not fat and he's just this beautiful kitty cat and I love his fur and he's like a medium coat cat, but it's like, could he be partly Maine Coon? Um, I know his father, judging by my former co-workers, um, witness of it was a, a big gray fluffy cat um, that was like a neighborhood cat and his mom was a feral cat well semi-feral she ended up being homed but uh, she's like a Duluth tortoiseshell and so I'm like hmm maybe he's part Maine Coon and I could say I have a Maine Coon cat even though I really don't have like a full Maine Coon cat but I love Maine Coons and um, Ta uh, tabu, <laughs> Kabu, I think, my tabby, is, um, I want to say she's probably some kind of, or the, they classify as oriental breed, like Siamese, um, Burman, Burmese, um, Tonkinese, um, there's several others like it, that she's just yapping all day long, she's, the sass of a girl. She loves to chat. She loves to cuddle. But she she's so loud and weird. And I want to say that she probably is part Oriental because they're known to be a talkative breed. But that is that is all sorts of stuff. And I'm like, oh, if I did a DNA test on both kitties, then I would know what their lineage is, where they originate from, maybe you know what their genetic makeup is, and learn more about my kitty cats. Um, and then the last one on my list of tasks is cat tree question um, mark. I will, I'm kind of ashamed of it now because it looks horrible, but I have a picture, I think on my, yeah, I have a picture on my Google Drive, so I'll put that, um, I have to look for it, but when it was in its prime, I made a cat tree, and here it is. And I spent like a week or two on it, like between dry time and stuff, because I did it in the summer and I had to wait for things to dry. And I was just working on it for a bit, but it wasn't like a crazy, crazy, crazy long time. I think it was because it was like a couple weekends worth and like some weeknights when I'd come home from work to, to assemble it together. But I made this cat tree and I still have it. It's here. It's ratty as all get out. Um, Koji loves it. Kabu loves it. Um, Kokuo, bless his heart, who passed away, he loved it. And I loved it because it was something I made myself. And But now it's seen its, its time. It was just some, you know, Ikea tables put together, some craft fur, some carpet samples from um, floor, uh, wood glue, some staples, some sisal rope that I wrapped around the legs, and um, this pattern, actually, this pattern, this uh, prototype, this idea came from ikeahack.net, and the description, if it's still an active, um, if it's still an active page of this particular project, I'll have it in the description box too. So if you feel inspired, you can go ahead and make your version of it as well, like I did. However, on the same site, um, I think I still have it bookmarked on my computer. There's another version, not the same table form, but another cat tree, cat tower, that's a lot taller. Um, that I also want to do to replace the one I have now and additionally my partner um, ran into a guy at Home Depot and I, I believe I shared this story with you guys already but we were at Home Depot because we were supposed to hang out with a friend didn't ended up going to Home Depot just to kill some time they had to pick up a few things and they were chatting with this guy who does more like carpentry as his like side hustle um, and he he can make cat trees and he said he had I don't think he was able to show it he wasn't able to show me any in his like portfolio from on his phone but he did say he had made cat trees so um 
my partner isn't like actively in touch with this person anymore because they were trying to get like linked up for like some job connections and I don't think they've pursued anything like that as far as following up with my partner to get connected to any hiring um, manager but uh, now that I know my partner has his contact uh, if I end up not making the cat tree myself um, I would love to design one and have this person build it <laughs> because they need something else um, and then if I make one and we have another one downstairs for the kitties then we have two awesome cat trees but they do need more spaces they're fine but they they do would like to be up high they do like to run around and play on things and having another cat tree I think would help with that so cat tree is on the list so those are my 2020 tasks um, not necessarily new year resolutions not necessarily anything that like if it happens it or if it doesn't happen it's going to be the end of the world but that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Um, so yeah, not really wanting to commit too hard to anything. Just because I know myself and I know that if things don't happen the way that I had planned, then sometimes I get a little bummed out about it. But I wanted to keep them like something that could happen. But the years just, I mean, I think of all of those things. So that could be easily like, you know, a task a month or... Um, you know, split it up over the year and get everything done gradually. But at the same time, I don't know about you guys, but it seems to me that the years are just going by so much faster than they used to. Like when I called my family and I was talking to my aunt on Christmas, she's like, yeah, I can't believe, you know, 2019 is over. And I'm like, I know it. I honestly felt like it went by in the blink of an eye and I don't know why that is but uh, let me know in the comments if you also feel like the year went by really quickly but at the same time it's like it didn't it's like this weird realizing how relative time is kind of a thing and all I know is that I would really like to not have to um, spring my clock forward in the next couple months here because I like when it's just like it is right now um, and every time I have to change the clock I just feel like why did I have to do that because what does it all mean you know but without being too philosophical um, yeah time's flying however you consider it it's going quickly for me um, I mean I can't believe it tomorrow will be the first <sighs> so yeah let me know in the comments if you have any resolutions or however you'd like to call them goals things to consider for 2020 um, it'll be interesting for the United States, I think, as a whole, just in what we're up to around here these days. Um, there's like... My partner is having a heart attack downstairs. <laughs> Sound like we had a parrot. <laughs> um, when, now, now I've lost my train of thought. But, uh, yeah, things are happening. Um, I also saw, totally unrelated, but I got this, I'm on the mailing list for webs or yarn.com and they said they're doing like some kind of retreat, knitting retreat in the spring. Did you guys, if any of you subscribe to their newsletter, uh, did you guys see that? I think, I want to say they either sent it out early December or they sent it out maybe like November or October-ish but um, I think more details are coming in January so tomorrow later tomorrow or sometime that month uh, if you are watching this tonight I don't know if this is gonna upload on time or not but hoping so um, but yeah I I kind of thought about doing that uh, I don't know how much it's gonna cost 
There was also this knitting cruise that I saw, and I thought that would be fun too, but I don't think I'm ready for a cruise yet just for knitting. I feel like I want to be like super good at it first to, to be worthy of spending a cruise amount of money to knit and, you know, stop at different ports and stuff. Um, don't know if I would be able to drag my partner along because they are not a knitter. Um, that would be so fun. I know they're a little more camera shy than I am, but I think it'd be so fun to have a day where I made a video with them and I showed them how to knit, um, and saw, like, you know, how well they would do, because they, they always see me do it, but I don't think they understand how it works. But then again, I feel the same way when they're explaining something to me that's really technical, I'm like, <laughs> All right, I think we can do one more round and then call it a night and let you guys go so you can enjoy your new year. But do you have any plans for New Year's? If you're if you're seeing this on New Year's Eve, um, let me know if you have any plans. And then if you're seeing this after New Year's Eve, uh, let me know what you did. So once I went. I was thinking because I was watching this um, like party mix on YouTube. Um, it was yesterday and I think the day before. It was like same DJ but different mix and it reminded me that when I was not super super young but younger than I am now my brother came out to visit me with his friend and my partner and I hosted and we went to this club for New Year's Eve and my brother had like such a good time uh, his friend met this girl not like they weren't like romantic or anything but they hung out with her later and they're like oh yeah your, your neck of the woods is nice we like it we like it and I was like cool and it was just a nice time because my brother and I we're not like we're not like best friends but we were very very similar in personality except for I mean, now that he's older, he's a little bit more, like, introverted, I think, just because he's been, like, jaded by life, I guess, but he was always, like, the one who was outdoors, making friends and stuff, but as far as, like, our, our humor and, you know, our interests are very, very much, like, very similar, very chill, and so they had a good time, and I was really glad about that. And we still text and stuff here and there because we don't, obviously, we don't live in the same state and we haven't since I moved out when I was uh, going to college. But um, just to think about that New Year's Eve was like the best New Year's Eve, I think, because my brother was here with me and his friend was here and we just had so much fun. I was taking them around, you know, we went shopping, we went to eat at different places and... I just got to give them, like, a pretty cool experience here, and it was nice. It was short. I wish you could have stayed longer, but I had to go to work, and they had to go do military stuff and all that, so it was just a nice little get-together. So hopefully one day we'll be able to reunite in person and do some fun party stuff again, just to to relive those those memories of having a good time with each other uh, but yeah since then I haven't really done anything for New Year's um, that was like a big deal like go to a club or anything um, but mostly kept it low-key uh, like tonight I'm just gonna film as I am right now uh, edit upload do some more knitting and just take it easy uh, I have to go to work on Thursday, so I'm just, like, mentally preparing for that. I've been enjoying being a lady of leisure. Uh, Monday I did go to work because there wasn't anybody there, so it was nice and quiet, and I had to catch up on some things. Um, but as far as, like, work work, like, where people were a asking me to do things, and I had some kind of timeline to complete, it was just me catching up on stuff, so... It was really chill, and I wish I could have days like that more often where I just did my own thing, got my stuff done, and left unbothered, <laughs> but it's not always like that, so I was like, oh, this is what it's like to be retired, I just do what I want to do, you know, 
whatever magical money is coming into my accounts, paying for my bills, and then I can just relax. And I have a long way to go till that happens. Unless I w like win the lotto or something, um, I'm going to be working for another, at least another 20 years or so. Um, so there's that. <laughs> there is that. Uh, but without depressing myself too much, I'm hoping one day I'll find a job that's exactly what I want to do and pays well and lets me retire like as early as my parents did so I can continue to keep knitting. So we're still working on this uh, rim, cuff, edge, collar, whatever you want to call it, but for the hat. Um, so you could see I have my um, my knitting here. It's probably a little blurry for you, maybe, but it's um, a knit. Well, it's a purl two knit one pattern, and I do that for I think three more rounds, maybe two more. I have to see <laughs> what my stitch counter said when I was downstairs because I don't know why I forgot that, and then see how many rounds I knit when I was filming with you guys and then that should tell me where I am but that'll conclude it for today um it's been a journey 50th episode guys like wow um I just want to say thanks so much for tuning in thank you so much for your comments and congratulatory remarks when I've made a goal and completed a goal and I love to interact with you guys. It's really cool to have this platform to be able to share things with you and to learn from you as well and just to get cool inspiration from everybody, anywhere. Um, I'm excited for 2020 and excited for this channel for 2020 and for all of you and all of us with all of our knitting stuff that we have going on. So yeah, I'll sign out now so I can get this uploaded. So hopefully if the YouTube feels like doing its thing in a timely manner, you'll be able to see it either tonight or tomorrow. But with that, thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.